Hey guys, I'm Uncle Joel with Pen and Reel, where we talk about comic books, video games, TV shows, movies, books, and more. We'll do reviews, speculation, ideas I have as a writer for what I would do if I was writing the movies or comics, and so on. Please leave a comment to let us know what you think. We really appreciate the feedback. If you like what you see, hit like and be sure to subscribe. And with that being said, on to the video. Hi there, I'm Uncle Joel with Pen and Reel, and this is Star Wars 2020, a look back at the Skywalker saga as a whole. So this is stop two on our two-stop detour from the Skywalker saga. We're going to look at Rogue One, uh, particularly in regards to how it ties in with A New Hope. But really, we're just going to more fo focus on the movie itself and how it holds up. Now, going into this, I know a lot of people that say Rogue One is their favorite Star Wars movie. They say that it does a great job of recontextualizing the state of the rebellion and really adds a lot of weight and gravitas that wasn't quite there in the original movies. But the thing is that when I first saw the movie, I enjoyed it, but it seemed like I didn't get the same kind of experience that everybody else did. Like, yeah, it was good, but it wasn't like great, and I didn't think it was the best Star Wars movie ever, but I know a lot of people who do. So I was kind of keeping that in mind when going into this movie. Is like, okay, is there something that I missed that everybody else picked up on? Or do I just not connect with it like everyone else does? So right off the bat, I really appreciated the cold opening. By this point, I can def definitely say I'm not a big fan of the opening crawls. You know, there may be some coming up in the original trilogy that I'll like and will kind of reset my opinion. But with every movie that I've watched so far, I would much prefer a cold open. Because the thing is, the opening crawls are very much telling you things that I feel like you should be seeing. Show, don't tell. And the opening crawls break that rule. Not only do I prefer the cold opening, but I really appreciate the acting here, especially in the opening sequences. What is it you want? The work is stalled. I need you to come back. I won't do it, Krennic. <laughs> I'd be of no help, Krennic. My mind just isn't what it was. I have trouble remembering. It is Lyra back from the dead. It's a miracle. Stop! Oh, Lyra. Troublesome as ever. You will never win. Do it. Now, I, I've long been a fan of Mads Mikkelsen. I, I hope I'm getting his name right. Ever since I saw him in a Hannibal, and I've definitely appreciated seeing him in other things since, and now going back, seeing other things that I had already seen him in and re realizing who it was. Yeah, I, I think he does a great job here, and the actors around him also do good jobs. And I would say that, at least to a degree, my friends are right that this movie does give a lot better context for the original trilogy and for the series as a whole. Like, I understand the plight of the Rebellion a lot more. Like, the Rebellion feels far more substantial, but also more ragtag. And it, it does a great job of making you feel what the average person might feel in regards to the Empire. So of all the movies, Rogue One does the best of contextualizing the situation. Most of the other movies get a bit removed and focus on the grand epic going on. It doesn't give you a great sense of the world and what the average person is experiencing. Whereas Rogue One, I do feel like does that decently. The humor feels quite a bit more natural than some of the other movies, particularly like the prequel trilogy or the sequel trilogy. Those have very different senses of humor, whereas the humor here feels a lot more natural which is fitting because this movie is much more serious in tone, which suits the nature of the story. Unfortunately, I ran into a problem with this viewing that I also ran into with my original viewing, which I think is the main thing that sets my experience apart from a lot of my friends and what keeps it from being so high on my list. And that's specifically that I don't connect with any of the characters. A part of that is that I know all of them are gonna die. I know all of them are not gonna make it out. But I've known other movies that are like that, and I really connect with the characters. Just for some reason, 
none of the characters really stand out to me as anything particularly memorable. There is the one monk guy who is fairly memorable. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. Chaos! The force is with me. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force, the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. I'm one with the force and the force is with me. And I do really appreciate the droid. Congratulations. You are being rescued. But aside from those two characters, no one else is really all that memorable, and I definitely don't connect with any of them. And even those two characters, while they're more memorable, I don't really connect with them all that well. Like, one of them is clearly comedic relief, and I'm not expecting to connect with them. But the other character, uh, maybe it's that he's a little bit too one-note for me. I, I don't know. I just... None of these characters really establish themselves as something for me to connect with. And if I can't connect with the characters well, then I can't feel invested in the story. Likewise, I never felt the sense of tension or the sense of urgency in the movie. Now, that may be because I didn't connect with the characters. It could possibly be entirely contributed to that. But since it's supposed to be this big, like, tense build-up to them trying to acquire the Death Star plans while having death lurk around every corner. I don't know. I, I guess it just, it should have felt so much more tense for me, but it didn't. And, and again, that, that may just be because I didn't connect with the characters, and therefore I did not connect with their situation. But I need this movie to be tense, and since it wasn't tense, it just wasn't as significant for me. Visually, this movie fits far better with the original trilogy than any of the other movies. And I really appreciated that. One of the big problems that I have with the prequels that I may not have mentioned is visually they felt too significantly different from the originals. Now, a lot of that was probably just the technology that was available at the time in both positive and negative ways. But personally, I would say keeping the visual element very consistent is extremely important. And that's one of the things that really draws me out of the movie from the original trilogy, as opposed to Rogue One, which can kind of draw me into it a bit more because it feels like it fits with the other movies. And the inclusion of Tarkin is widely considered one of the negatives of the movie, and I definitely agree it is a negative. You know, the CGI wasn't great, and it might have been okay if it was more from a distance. You know, having a few quick scenes with Tarkin a bit far off, I think that would have been fine. But having these super close-ups where you can clearly see how good or not so good the CGI is, I feel like was a very poor decision. The Vader scene, however, was phenomenal. always wanted on screen, but never truly got. I mean, this is the Vader that I think should have been highlighted at the end of Star Wars Episode Three. You know, give us more sequences showing us just how ruthless and how terrifying he can be. I feel like more than anything, Vader is supposed to be a terrifying figure, and this does a good job of showing us just how terrifying he is. And then the ending sequence of the movie was the main thing that we all came for. This big war scene and this battle to get to the Death Star plans and then to get it off planet and ultimately to get it to Leia. I feel like there was far too much buildup of the characters to eventually get to this point when this point is what most of the movie should have been. Like, yeah, establish the characters, but then show us far more of them in the thick of it, like really exploring the war of it and really exploring them 
going after the Death Star planes. Now, I don't really have any thoughts on how they could have done that in a compelling way, and I think that's largely because I didn't connect with any of the characters, so I can't really say, oh, they should have done this different or developed this more. It just, for me personally, the only part that I was really interested in was that final sequence. Overall, I would say this is a good movie, and it does a lot to set up for A New Hope, but since I didn't really connect with any of the characters, most of it didn't really matter to me. Like, I, I feel like you could have had the opening sequence and then the final sequence, and that's it, and I would have gotten just as much out of the movie. Everything else is character build up and build up to get to the end that I don't really feel is necessary since I'm not really connecting with any of it. So yeah, if you have just the opening sequence and just the closing sequence, I will enjoy that just as much as I enjoyed the movie as is. Maybe even more because I'm not going through all of the other stuff that I'm not connecting with. So yeah, overall I would say the movie's good. I definitely enjoy it, but I still don't fully understand why people appreciate it so much. Now yes, my friends say that it gives us the Vader that we've always wanted, and I agree completely. And they also say it gives a good sense of the state of the rebellion, and it really does a good job of contextualizing the series. And again, I agree with those points, but since there's so much that I don't connect with and so much buildup that doesn't really pay off for me, I feel like that detracts from those positive points for me. Not in this like overly negative way, just it doesn't really have that connection for me. So there you have it. Those are my thoughts on Rogue One. I hope you stick around and join us next time when we dive back into the Skywalker saga with A New Hope. Until then, this is Uncle Joel saying, stay tangible.